On Sounds of the World's Languages, you're going to learn about the amazing diversity of human speech sounds and how they're produced, what they sound like, and we'll also learn about comparable structures in sign languages. Um, I'm going to tell you about a particularly interesting group of sounds today, r sounds, and they're actually my favourite sounds. Um, they're quite common across the world, they're found in about three quarters of the world's languages, uh, but they're particularly interesting because there's a lot of variety in how they're produced. When we think about English, we just have a r sound, uh, or maybe if you learned North American English, that sounds more like a r sound. But straight away, when I demo that, you can see that I'm using my lips as well as moving my tongue to produce the sound. So r, 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 you can see my lips moving. Because of this, r sounds are considered articulatorily complex because they use different parts of the vocal anatomy in their production. And because they're so complex, uh, they're among the last sounds acquired by children. In other languages, they're quite different. So if we think about French and German, for example, a r is a sound produced much further back in the mouth. So it sounds like r. R. In Spanish, on the other hand, they've got two different R sounds. They've got something like a R and also a rolled R sound. And those are used to differentiate between words. In Beijing Mandarin, there's a change going on by which young professional people associated with the tech industry produce an R-like quality to their vowels at the end of words. On Sounds of the World's Languages, we're going to learn how to describe all of these sounds, how to produce them, and you'll also learn about conducting your own phonetic analysis by analysing the physical properties of sound waves used in speech. Mm -hmm.